Welcome to Cardiac Delusions. Let's see our code today. For any bradycardia, give atropine. Is it true or false? We have a 73-year-old female who presented to the ER by lightheaded starting two hours ago, and the ER doctor checked her pulse, which was 40 beat per minute and was regular, and blood pressure was 130 over 80. This doctor once he diagnosed bradycardia, he rushed to give her IV atropine 1 milligram without doing an ECG as a patient was actually bradycardic by examination. But what happened that the heart rate dropped after atropine to 30 beat per minute with near syncope and the blood pressure dropped to 80 over 50 millimeter mercury. It was clear clinical deterioration. Another doctor in the ER performed an ECG immediately, which showed an evidence of 4 to 1 AV block. So it is frankly second degree Mobitz type 2. And at that time, the doctor understood the reason for this clinical deterioration, while the first doctor did not understand why the patient would deteriorate after IV atropine. So what's the reason for this? We classify arrhythmias into disorders in impulse generation called sinus node dysfunction or the old name of sick sinus syndrome and disorders in impulse conductions usually called AV blocks. Sinus node dysfunction manifests itself as sinus bradycardia, sinus poses, tachybrady syndrome or chronotropic incompetence which is diagnosed by treadmill test rather than resting ECG. Sinus bradycardia is easy to diagnose. It shows persistent P wave with normal axis and morphology as it is of SA nodal origin, heart rate below 60, regular with 1 to 1 AV relationship. While in sinus poses, we can see temporary cessation of SA nodal activity, resulting in disappearance of P waves and then it reappears again. And how can we measure the length of sinus pose? We can measure the distance from the last P wave before this interval to the first appearing P wave in milliseconds, so it is a PP interval. In tachybrady syndrome, we can see both pouts of sinus bradycardia or escape rhythm, alternating with pouts of atrial fibrillation or atrial flutter with rapid ventricular rate, and it reflects the dysfunction of SA node as a normal pacemaker of the heart. That's why sometimes the patient is bradycardic in the form of sinus brady or escape rhythm, and sometimes the SA node lose control, resulting in appearance of pouts of tachyarrhythmia like flutter or fibrillation. So what would be the effect of atropine in these different types? In sinus bradycardia, the heart rate would increase. In sinus poses, heart rate would also increase with reduction in the number of poses. In tachybrady syndrome, it may increase heart rate and reduce the bradycardic episodes. AV blocks is classified into first degree, second degree, and third degree. And then second degree AV block is subclassified into Mobitz type 1 and Mobitz type 2. In first degree AV block, there is fixed PR interval prolongation due to prolonged conduction delay in the AV node or the HES bundle. So the PR interval is more than 200 milliseconds, so it is more than one large square, but there is one to one AV relationship. In second degree MOBS type 1, famously called Winky Pack phenomena, we can see here that initially the P wave is followed by a complex, then there is gradual prolongation of the PR interval till one of the P wave is blocked not followed by a complex, so there is progressive prolongation of the PR interval till a blocked P wave, then the PR interval shortens again and it gradually prolongs in order to repeat the same cycle, so there is shortening again of the PR interval after the block P wave resulting in clustering of beats. These are the criteria of Winky Pack phenomenon. While in Mobis type 2, here we can see a fixed ratio of AV block, for example, 2 to 1 or 3 to 1. So, for example, from each 2 P waves, only one is conducted, or from each 3 P waves, only one is conducted. So, it is a more aggressive type. Of AV block. In third degree or complete AV block, here we can see that the P wave are completely dissociated from the complex due to complete block in the AV nodes, and the reason is that there is no conduction at all in the AV node or the HES bundle, and so here the ventricle is dependent on an escape junctional or escape idioventricular rhythm, while the atrium is paced by a sinus rhythm. That is the reason for complete AV dissociation. So what about the effect of atropine on different types of AV blocks? In first degree, which is the most benign type, we can see an increase in heart rate and shortening of the PR interval. While in the most aggressive type, which is complete AV block, 
there is no effect on the heart rate as here there is no conduction at all between atrium and ventricles. What about second degree? If it is MOBIS type 1, it is usually a benign type, so the heart rate would increase. While in MOBIS type 2, we can see here paradoxical slowing of the heart rate with atropine. Why would this happen? Let's see this example. We have a patient here with 2 to 1 if we block mostly due to MOBIS type 2, as here the atrial rate is 80 beat per minute, while the ventricular rate is just 40 beat per minute. The doctor gave here IV atropine. So what would happen? The atrial rate would increase by the effect of atropine. Here, the AV node, when it detects an increase in atrial rate, it would increase the rate of AV block due to decremental behavior of the AV node, which is a physiological property. So here, the ventricular rate would be the third of atrial rate, so it would drop to 30 beat per minute. This explains why IV atrophy may paradoxically slow patient with MOBS type 2 AV block and so it is dangerous to give atropine in this type of patient. So if one of your colleagues asked you this famous question, can I give IV atropine to a patient with second or third degree AV block? In a patient who is showing 2 to 1 AV block with white complex, mostly it is infrahistian level due to MOBITS type 2 because we assume the more dangerous type of 2 to 1 so here atropine should not be used because here it may lead to paradoxical slowing of ventricular rate and in third degree it is futile as here the heart rate will not increase or decrease so our patient actually had 2 to 1 AV block due to MOBITS type 2 and after IV atropine the AV block turned to 4 to 1 resulting in slowing of ventricular rate so we can conclude that IV atropine may help some patients with pratyarrhythmias, but it is not suitable for all types of pratycardia because it may be dangerous in MOBS type 2 resulting in paradoxical slowing and it has no effect in third degree AV block. Thank you very much for watching this video and wait next week for the next delusion.